Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of My Darkest Hour. I'm your host, Stefan. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful day. Hope you guys are out there safe. If you are in California, hope you are staying somewhat dry because the storm just doesn't seem to be letting up. So, of course, I cannot mow my lawn and get it down to a sensible size. So, uh, hey, I, I, I love the water. We need it. I appreciate it. But I, I got to get out there because my wife keeps asking me about uh, taking care of the lawn. Anyway, for the past few weeks, you guys know I've been talking about a special event coming up here at, at the end of the month uh, that I'm really looking forward to and I really feel honored to be a part of. And that is the Parapod Festival um, coming up. And you can check this out. I, I've been telling you guys uh, the last couple of weeks to go to parapodfestival.com and see all the amazing speakers on there. We have a lot of friends. A lot of people who have been on this show as well over the past few years uh, are going to be there. But I thought, you know, I'm rambling on about it. And I, I'm talking about what like me and Patty are going to be doing because you guys know that we, we do a lot of stuff together. But I thought it'd be better if I brought the mastermind behind this whole festival onto the show. And the person I'm talking about is a, a gentleman named Tony Sweet. Uh, some of you might know of him. He is the owner of the United Broadcasting Network. Um, it's uh, in Burbank, California. He does a lot of streaming media and podcasts. Uh, he is the podcast producer and the parent host of the very popular Truth Be Told. I know you guys check that show out. Uh, it's one of the great ones out there giving us a lot of information. So I'm really fortunate to have Tony on the show today. So let's just go right in, dive right into this one and bring him onto the show. Hey, Tony, how are you? How you doing? Oh, I'm good, man. My friend are happy to be here. <laughs> the mastermind right there. The Dr. Evil. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So how are you doing today? I, you know, I'm doing great. Um, couldn't be better. As they say, I'm blessed. And so I'm excited to be on your show. Oh, well, thank you so much. Excited to have you on the show. Thank so you. So for thank the past you. couple of weeks, I've been talking about... Um, the, the Parapod Festival. And it's yeah, what is, what is that? <laughs> gathering that you, you've got coming together, which is uh, so many variety of people. You know, it's not just people going to see one thing or just tailored to one aspect of the paranormal, but it's a huge gamut of uh, conglomerations of people bringing different aspects to uh, the paranormal. Right. And I see um, that there's huge names on there. Uh, Linda Howe, uh, which I see on like every UFO TV show, which I absolutely love her, and and she we see her on Skinwalker Ranch, right? And stuff like that, and it's huge. So I'm I'm look I'm happy to see her. Ben Hansen's a longtime friend of mine, been on the show a lot. You know, you, you have some of us uh, paranormal people, our our spirited people, so we speak, coming on the show. So let's talk a little bit about you. And how you got involved in going forward into the paranormal. So, okay. So, I have almost 900 episodes of Truth Be Told. So, it's all about paranormal. Um, I started 13 years ago. I've been 15 years in podcasting, about 12 to 13 years of paranormal. Um, when I first started out, it was more of an entertainment show. You know, the latest movies and the latest albums being released. And I liked it. I enjoyed it. But I was like, that is just not my passion. And so how I got started in the interest for paranormal was actually when I was a little kid. I think, and I, I tell people all the time, if we're in this field, we've had experiences somewhere um, that perked our interest. Um, when I was a kid, I saw a ghost in the house that I grew up in. Um, there you go. My family never saw it, but they heard it. They heard things, doors closed, footsteps. Um, years later, my nephew, about the same age I was, when I saw it, also saw it. The, there was an old man in the house I grew up in. And then also oh. my mom, my sisters, I had two sisters, and my brother and myself were driving out in the country. I'm a small country town boy in Kansas. Um and there was a UFO hovering over a lake. Um, I don't remember this as well because I was pretty young. I was pretty young. But my mom, before she passed away, we even talked about it. 
that she goes, I remember seeing it and you wanted to go with them. <laughs> so she, that's what she said. I'm like, I did. She said, well, that makes sense. But she also said she saw another uh, UFO in a landed in a field as we were driving down a dirt road at another time. Again, I don't remember it, but she did call the day after that she called the McConnell Air Force Base, uh, it, which is in Wichita, Kansas. And they actually came down to where I'm from, which is about an hour and a half drive from Wichita, southeast of Wichita. And they surveyed the whole land that she saw this UFO on. Because at the time in the 70s, there were a lot of UFO sightings in that area. Um, so that's, I believe, how really it just instilled in me. In fact, my sister, Sherry, my oldest sister, I'm the baby, the best looking and all that stuff, but she's the oldest. Uh, she's the oldest. Yeah. She recently told me, and I didn't, I'm like, how did I not know this story? In fact, I'm going to have her on my show one of these days to talk about it. She said the same night that we saw the UFO, because she was a teenager, so she remembers it like it was yesterday, she said. She said, I had a dream that some type of creatures came to visit me. And, and she says, I don't know if I was abducted or what, but all I know is when I woke up in the morning, I had my socks on and they were soaking wet like I had been outside. So I was like, uh, you may have been abducted. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that really kind of kept the conversations going throughout my life of talking about UFOs and ghosts and pretty much anything that you can think of in my family. My dad was a skeptic, always has been, still is at 88 years old. You know, he's like, ah, whatever. But all of us kids and my mom until the day she died believed in this stuff. So that's really how it all started for me. That's, Great stories right there, getting it out of the way early. I mean, you've seen a ghost right? in your house. That opens up one realm. It's like, oh, okay, this is going on now. Nice. Then you're going <laughs> traveling with your family, and all of a sudden, what the hell is that thing over the lake? Right? I want to go. You know? <laughs> right. So that kind of opens you. you up to that environment. You yeah. know, and uh, that's amazing. And if your sister got abducted, you know, find out. See if she's got a chip somewhere. Right. Uh, that's what I... Fun. No, well, that's I, I why I wish she of, could come out so she can meet Linda because I was hoping she could come out and meet Linda and ask her questions and Linda can ask her questions, vice versa, so they can find out if there's any information that she could maybe understand what happened. Absolutely. She would know because she's done so many cases on it and she would know all the aspects. Right. And all <laughs> trigger signs. I mean, she could just look at her and go, oh, yeah, a couple of yeah. times. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny because all the paranormal stuff that I've done uh, over the past 30 years is uh, I try to just stick to ghosts, 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 you know. Right. You know, don't bother me with Bigfoot. Don't, I don't want to deal with aliens right now. Just give me ghosts right now. Right, right. But a lot, so many cases that I worked on Very had processor. strange um, you, alien type. We, we got weird shapes of images in the backgrounds of places where we're, we're taking pictures of. Mm -hmm. uh, strange light anomalies coming out of the sky and it looks like and i swear we did one case and it looked like the great gazoo from the flintstone show <laughs> tiny little saucer yeah. looking thing with little fire rockets on the side coming down and landing in the backyard of uh, a haunted location we're like what the hell's going on and it was parked by the the dog house and it was like about <laughs> like softball size right I'm like you gotta be kidding me we're seeing this on the cameras and i'm like oh what's going on so and then it takes off, and then we're just looking at the steel images of it. It's like, I swear to God, dude, this is just getting out of control. I want to do ghosts, but we keep getting all this alien stuff. So there is obviously some kind of connection between the two, whatever, where if it's a, a, a gravity pull or some type of electromagnetic uh, electromagnetic phenomenon pulling it there. I, right. I believe all this stuff is connected. Don't you think uh, after this many years of I mean, 30 years and, you know, me like really touching deep at diving into is, you know, 13 years. Don't you think the more you research that you feel like Bigfoot, the grays or any type of alien species and and uh, ghost 
kind of all intertwined, even angels kind of almost connect in a way because they are from a different realm. Um, and Bigfoot, it's like, how, you know, how is this big hairy beast get spotted and then it just disappear and we can't find bone, hardly any bones or, you know, we find some tracks, but we don't really see them. And, you know, listen, my aunt Bertha, you know, she was a big woman and she couldn't get lost in the woods for the life of her, you know? So how in the hell did they, you know, go so unnoticed after being spotted? So for me, it's like, it has to be somehow some type of alien species that can just beam me up Scotty and you know, go, head out to the next uh, location. I, I totally believe that. I've come to the conclusion that even Bigfoot can be multi-dimensional being. Yeah. It's showing up, doing its thing, running through the forest, whatever is trying to gather energy or gather food source or whatever, and then it makes its way. You know, we get a right. glimpse of it. Here's a little bit of fur. Oh, here's some bark ripped from a tree. Right. Where'd it go? It, we surrounded the whole area. So it did its thing, saw you were coming, and then just kind of beamed down of there. Yeah. Um, I don't put anything past anything anymore. Like I said, I've been doing this a long time. I've seen some strange things that I, I think are really have. cool. Uh, I even got a chance to see a fairy at a location. Right, oh, wow. Right, and all the cameras and everything, we were able to freeze frame it, and I swear it was not a cricket. It was not a grasshopper. It looked like Tinkerbell. It was, <laughs> I was in total denial. I was like, you got to be kidding. You got to be kidding. I'm like, well, it's it's a it's a nature spirit, too. It's, you got to remember that. Blah, blah, blah. Leprechauns, all this stuff. I'm all, leprechauns? Really? We're going to find a <laughs> kind of gold town? Right, but these right. are all spiritual beings that are multidimensional. That's how they elude us. We're not we're not hip to that technology yet, so we're not there yet. Well, I think a lot of uh, mythical creatures and mythical stories have to start from somewhere. Because exactly. um, my my thing is, even if you think about when, even in twenty twenty three, when we see something, watch a movie a story being told to us and the description, we actually start dreaming about, you know, could be a scary thing chasing us, but there's something has to be kind of implanted in our head. Let's go back to the Greek gods, the Greeks, you know, the chariots and Thor and Zeus and all the, you know, lightning bolts and all these things. It's like, where did they didn't have any television and cell phones to look this stuff up. So somebody has to have implanted this way advanced stories into these people's heads of, uh, uh, of mythical gods or gods that they really believe that were there. So I just believe that they've had to have seen something to give them that, you know, the stories to tell. So that's why Absolutely. I said, yeah, right. Even like the, the Egyptian hieroglyphics, they're showing like a saucer thing with a dome on it. Or right. A guy sitting there waving to you. It's like, really? Right. Where did they see that? You know, that wasn't just some guy in a hot air balloon floating right. overhead. That was something with the rockets coming out of it. Right. So, so, the, the Mayan Empire, same thing. They show exactly. a, a guy in there and he's got all the control and he's got the, the breathing apparatus. Right. It's like, where did that come from? You can't just make that stuff up. You only make that stuff up if you if you're very creative. I mean, you have to be very creative, but to to even dream of having a, a helmet with oxygen and tanks and yeah. you know, it's like how, you can't just make that stuff up just because. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it all comes from somewhere. And I say it all the time, somebody saw something, they, they wrote down about it and talked about it. They told somebody, they right. told two more people, they told more people. Right. So the whole <laughs> legend goes out. And I'll, like I say, you know, I'm one of the guys that, that want to have hardcore evidence right. before I, I, I believe in stuff. I always had a feeling about UFOs out there growing up as a kid, just like, just like you were talking about being with my mom driving and, I'm a little kid. I'm just looking around outside and noticing the, the city, seeing strange objects in the sky that don't make sense. Right. Not, there's a round ball in the sky. It's not moving. Is it supposed to be doing that? I mean, what's going on? <laughs> Until the day I actually saw 
a UFO, not even uh, not even 500 feet above my head. It was right there. And it caught my attention, and I thought it was a jumbo jet off course coming over this mountain range that I was standing. Right. I was kind of in this parking lot. It was coming over this mountain range and rumbling oh, like cool. a rocket. It was wow. so loud. And I'm like, wow, where's that guy going? He's off the road of the freeway. <laughs> and then I look, I realized as it started to come into view, because it's nighttime, it's right. got these these before these four huge lights on, and I'm thinking jumbo jet lights. It's got to be a jumbo jet. Where is it going? And it gets closer and rumbling, and it turns the lights off, and it's all black. Oh, wow. I'm like, what the hell? Is this guy in trouble? What's going on? And it's rumbling, and I can see it heading towards my direction over the, the town, heading into town. And then it cuts its jets off. The rumbling just stops. Oh, my and God. And it's massive. And it's flying over my head. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And it's not flying hundreds of miles an hour. It's going about 50 miles an hour. Which and is I, unheard of for it, an aircraft. <laughs> it, it looked like it like looked like something out of Star Wars, but it was all black. Right, right. Oh and my like, god. Where the hell is this? Is this some kind of new stuff? I don't know. It could be some new government thing they were working on. I don't know, but it was pretty wild and amazing. And it drifted by slowly, um, just cruising all blacked out with no sound. It was mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. Oh, my God. So that was my experience. Well, you know, that's actually a very similar experience to what Jimmy Carter, President Jimmy Carter had when he was, I think, either a kid or a young man. They talked about a craft fly, flying real slowly over, if I remember right, flying over him and I think other family members. Um, that he, that's how he believed in, that there were UFOs. Uh, probably. He probably yeah. looked into that when he got into office, you know, and I, like I said, I don't know if it came from another planet. I don't know if it's some new technology. Uh, right. I live out here on the coastline. I'm, I'm, he, I'm near, uh, what used to be a secret military base. It's not so right. secret. You can see it right there. Um, but <laughs> maybe it was something from our government, but it was definitely way ahead of its time. And. I didn't know what it was, so it qualifies as a UFO, you know, and I look for that kind of stuff. It kind of reminds me of uh, the triangles, UFOs, because oh, this yeah, thing that... was a big triangle. Because my yeah. first impression was, oh, what is this, a Death Star or something? What's going on here? <laughs> and it was a triangle, and it was just cruising, and it was pretty impressive. I, was, I wouldn't mind getting a flight on that. It probably has nice seats or something. I don't know. You know, I, I think if you, if, you know, when you compare the, the, spirits the ghost to ufos spirit kind of has similar um stories from you know hundreds to thousands of years you know how it's being told because but ufos if you think about it when it, it the spirit you can correct me if i'm wrong but like ghost side has not really advanced us in technology as ufos have helped to us grow our technology. Maybe ghosts have made us understand the spirit world more and mm. getting a better understanding of the other dimensions, but UFOs have brought so much technology because if you think about, my grandfather was born in 1903. And so from 1903 until now 2023, I mean, technology has grown it's hard to believe that we just go, hey, look what I invented. And then yeah. a little over 100 years later, we're like flying now to Mars and having cell phones and computers that, you know, you can implant into people. And I mean, it's crazy how fast we advanced in technology in just 100 years. Absolute fiber optics, night vision, oh. I mean, all that stuff just came out of nowhere. I don't know. After, <laughs> after uh, Vietnam, the, uh, there were all these generals saying, yeah, we got brought in to re-engineer all this stuff. Right. A lot of people talk about it. Bob Lazar, who worked at Area 51, talks about that stuff. He even had uh, a replica of a wormhole generator in his living room that he was showing and talking about. It oh, had, my gosh. It was crazy design. It was like a perfect schematic design that he was able to reproduce that he learned from re uh designing UFO technology. And he admits it. And there's a lot of government officials says, yeah, you know, we just looked at it and we figured it out. We got it going in just in time. Uh, 
night vision is a perfect example. Yeah. They say with the, with aliens, uh, when when we see the the greens, the shorter guys, the workers, mm-hmm. uh, that those the big eyes, yeah, the black eyes they have, those are actually lenses that help them see in the dark. And they have <laughs> thermal technology and stuff. And I believe it. Why not? You know, they said they were reverse engineering that stuff, and that's how they came up with the idea for infrared. Let me ask you this. I mean, I'll, I'll switch the table and I'll, I'll become the host of Truth Be Told real quick. So, because I've never been on a ghost hunt, which I've always wanted to do. You know, I've, I've lived in a, a house that had a spirit, but I've never really went in seeking ghosts. I know, you know, Patty is, is like an instrument. You know, a lot of psychics that go in are like actually a high tech instrument that, you know, people that are very sensitive and also have the talent to do that. But technology wise, like you said, we know the technology. Now we can see through the web telescope trillions of light years away. But how how has technology grown in the spirit world when when it comes to seeking because you think we would be able to create more stuff to tap in to a little bit more to the the other dimension versus the them coming to our side to be seen how absolutely that, great that's a great question great question so just like anything else you know the technology that moves around us brings us different fields of science right uh, so a lot of the stuff that i use you know over the years People just saw a ghost and they'd get a ghost on a photograph, but not really understanding. Uh, as we started doing EVPs, we learned that right. the vocal process from a spirit is a manipulation of a wave frequency. So there's sounds out there that are currently moving around us that we realize, and the, the spirit can use that as a manipulation to make certain sounds. Right. There's a and stuff like that. What's Great about the latest technology is we've been able to tap into uh, multiple frequencies. And I this is what I say to a lot of people. Imagine us standing in the middle of uh, whether I'll, – I'll do a couple of them. I'll say, well, imagine standing in a subway station, right? Right. And there's these different trains going by. There's these different, mm-hmm. these different things. And these are, these are frequencies that are moving by us. They're, they're, they're propelled by electronic uh, fields. Um, so we have equipment that can help us tap into these fields. Uh, right. I use a thing that's well known as a spirit box. I have a special custom made one and it listens to frequencies. It, it, hmm. it's, it's a program you can actually tap into different frequencies and I can isolate frequencies. And, you know, for years I've been tap, I've been tapping in and I've been hearing multiple spirits trying to talk over each other. Right. And they're all just kind of going and zipping by and they're trying to get their, their message in. But if I isolate one, I can have one frequency running, and if I'm making contact with this one spirit, that spirit can talk directly to us now hmm. by doing that, you know. And they have to, and it's hard for them to to communicate with us on our in our realm, which is right. such a dense three D uh, processing world. They need to feed off electricity because that's what they're made of. They are made up of positively charged ions because ions in the air. Uh, when we walk into a room that has a bad ground, um, there's electricity everywhere, you kind of feel sick, you feel nauseous because being a water-based uh, creature like we are, the electricity is affecting our body. Right. So the same thing with them. They need to be able to manifest and grab from these ions in the air and, uh, to become stronger and to manipulate the wavelengths that we are you trying to communicate with them. That's why when you, when you go on a ghost hunt, um, you're getting activity. But the activity doesn't last for hours and hours and hours. It's not like Hollywood. You right, get these, right. You get these glimpses and pieces. The spirit wants to light up these meters for a couple of minutes. Uh, that's great. They can, they, can, they can say yes, no, whatever. We do EVPs. They can talk to us, answer short questions. You know, they're not going to sit there and tell you a whole story. Well, I was born in 1842. <laughs> right, right. You're not I mean, that would that. be cool, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Tell me your whole story, you know. Right. But they get these pieces. You know, were, were you a miner at, at this camp? Yes. You know, what 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 was your name? And sometimes they'll tell you the name, or they'll tell you their nickname, which is always awesome. I love hearing that stuff. You know, and then they they do as long as they can. And then they get tired because the ions are breaking down, just like we do when we go outside and try to right. live our exactly. world. By the end of the day, we're just beat. 
Right. So at the end of that session, they're really beat. They're tired, you know. So there's things that I have to bring along, uh, EMF pumps. that puts a lot of electromagnetic stuff in the air. I run a, a, a plasma ball, so the, right. the room will fill with plasma. And they walk in like, oh, yeah, I'm feeling good. It's like a Red Bull. I'm already charged up, and I'm going to talk, and I'm going to light these up. You know, that's how we get our information. And sometimes when the conditions are correct, we can get great photographs of them as well. Well, that's great. You know, it reminds yeah, actually, me. But No, I, it reminds me of the movie Ghost. And I've heard that it's one of the best describe, description of what actually ghosts are. Because if you remember Patrick Swayze, when he passed away, it took him a long time. Every time he would exert to be able to move or touch or whatever, it would completely exhaust him until he got, you know, in the movie, until he got a little more understanding how to ball that energy up and not completely drain him. But it's kind of sounds like that in a way. That's exactly correct. And when I'm doing my classes at the university and stuff, uh, I talk about that. They ask about that. And I always use all these great movie references. And that is right. one that I use all the time. So, well, how can they move it? Well, because we're talking about matter around us and there's energy right. everywhere. You can't see all the energy or you go nuts. You, know, you can't right. see the air, but it's there. You know it's there. Right. So they have to draw from things around them. Like I'm, if I put on EMF pump and let it run for 30 minutes before I go in and try to talk to the ghost, the, the, the ions are in the air. It can pull from that and manifest it to itself to make it so stronger. Mm. And that's how you do it. You know, he great point. He goes in the subway and he's trying to move stuff and nothing's working. Right. And, the, and the angry guy comes like, what are you doing? You don't have a body. <laughs> you can't do it. You need to take everything from deep inside and explode it out. Right. And that's what it is. They're, they're harnessing this energy to make them so stronger, to be able to manipulate things in our world. And that's what we do with the equipment. You know, it's kind of like, I, I guess, for, at you your know, uh, at the Parapod Festival, I'm actually planning on bringing some equipment to show some stuff. Oh, great. Which uh, a lot of people ask me about. People are saying, oh, can when you go to there, can I see the stuff that you guys are talking about, what you use? Absolutely. That's because great. when me and Patty do the seances and she's lifting the veil and things are coming at us, you know, it's, it's pretty intense. And you can feel the energy change when she does this. So what I've done um, over the years of working with Patty is I'll bring out my, my meters and I have a bunch of custom stuff. Right. When she's making a contact with a spirit and somebody thinks they're related to that spirit or whatever, I'll walk over and I'll put a piece of equipment, this guy right here, and I'll put it in their hand and they'll just hold it. And, and if they're making contact with that spirit and it's asking a question, this thing will start lighting up. It starts oh, validating cool. everything Patty's doing. And I wanted yeah. to bring that to the table because, you know, People like Patty and all these other great psychics, um, they do all this wonderful stuff and they help people and they communicate a lot. But you get all those people who are the science-based guys. Yeah. Like, oh, well, I don't have any proof. She could say she's seeing anybody and it could be a coincidence. But how do you have concrete evidence? Well, I'm the guy that kicks in that door and goes, hold on. Look at this. I'm going to put all this stuff everywhere. There's no way. There's nothing over there. If that starts lighting up, then we have something. And then she starts lighting up. And they start doing the thing like, how is that possible? You know? Um, I'm the kind of I'm the guy that wanted to bring the spiritual realm and the science realm and put them together. There's no reason they they can't coexist because they do. Everything that we do in life has some kind of formula behind it, and there's mm -hmm. a series of science of everything. So there's there's science for aliens, there's science for ghosts, there's science for angels, fairies, right. whatever it is. There's 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 a, there's a, a compound behind it that we all have to just kind of know about and i try to educate people that way with using science that relates to the supernatural oh i love it and and i was thinking if you know actually i remember those studies where they brought these psychics in you know for telepathic um purposes and some people being able to you know move objects with their mind and in a lot of ways, we can do, I mean, I may sound really stupid when I say this, but in a lot of ways, we can move. Here's my fake tree. In a way, oh, we, can, we can move this without touching it by exerting energy. 
by blowing on, if we blow hard enough, if we can blow 50 miles an hour of wind, we can knock this over without touching it with energy that we are creating in a way. So in a, they're just learning how to do that in, in ways of creating, you know, the, the, the spirit world, creating energy to move. Like, like we said with what Patrick did. So really, I mean, cause a hurricane is really just energy built up and pressing or pushing forth wind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so in a way that's how, anybody could do move things with their mind i think about it i blow out far hard enough it's going to move so you know we can we can do it it's just like you said scientifically what you're doing is bring science to the table which i think a lot of people that are skeptic that's when they're going oh that makes sense yeah we can we can do things and and uh spirits can be real because of scientifically what you're proving so this is great i love what you're saying yeah and and the people i've talked to about this coming up event they ask about that stuff and that's why i want to bring a couple of cases and show them and explain to them how this <clears throat> relates how the, the, the spirits can manipulate this device right um it's kind of confusing for the spirits sometimes especially when dealing with older spirits that don't get a lot, a lot of attention Right. I'll bring some equipment out. They're just like, whoa, I'm not touching that thing. Dude. What are you talking about? What What the yeah. hell is that? Why is it blinking at me? You know, and that <laughs> happens. But once they get an idea, you explain it to the spirit. And just like you explain it to anybody else, they go, oh, okay, I'll try. I'll try, try to move my hand over. Oh, it's doing something. You know, it's, it makes a lot more sense. And with the skeptical people, if I just start talking about the science uh, of why it is in, in, right. in my book, um, <clears throat> science of a haunting it explains well this is happening because these these mathematics are happening right. this is the formula that's making this happen like you were just talking about if we, if we can blow with our our we can move objects with our minds or with whatever uh we were able to manifest that and people do people yeah they totally do, do. in history uh, i think it takes a lot to deal with um a mental strain you have mm -hmm. to mentally prepare yourself you have to get not just mentally in your brain but with right. your body, your body has to understand what's yeah. happening and be able to do that. Um, when we go into out to a storm like you were just talking about, you can feel the static electricity in the air. So oh, yeah. going on here? It's like, wow, there's a lot of energy out here today. You know, what's happening? Uh, when we do paranormal investigations, we get excited if there's a, a, a lightning storm coming by because that is feeding the ions in the air. They yeah. get stronger. If we're able to concentrate deep enough, and it's hard in our everyday world, <laughs> because we're working, we're paying bills, we're worried about our mortgages. Right. There's a lot of distractions going on, you know. But when we start doing um, focusing on our energy and what we can do, we might be able to manifest and harness the energy exterior of our avatars that we're in, mm. and able to uh, move objects using the energy just like the spirits do. There's no reason why we can't. People have done it. I've seen people do demonstrations. You get those guys that are just holding the spoon and the spoon just starts melting starts, all over the yeah, place. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, and I see these little kids doing it, like, in monks and stuff. It's like, wow. But they're totally uh, embedded into their environment, and they have the focus and concentration that they can use to manipulate their environment. And that's a lot of what spirits are doing. Oh, I, lo I, I love that. I love that. And I, I think about a lot of people, these very intelligent minds, when they're younger, they get older and many of them start getting Alzheimer's and dementia. I'm wondering if yeah. people that have that ability, how they can maintain that as they get older. Uh, I'm curious to, to see the studies on later in life of what their mental state is. Yeah. And I, and my hypothesis is, uh, everybody's born with a certain level of abilities yeah. with the sixth sense and everything because we're, we're these energy beings and we're freshly born and our minds are wide right. open. Our, 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 our processing unit up here is just going crazy, absorbing all the information. And we're good to go for a while. But then yeah. we start getting into, well, you have to go to school. You have to do this. You have to learn to read and write. And all of a sudden, our brain is absorbing all this other information that's causing us 
you know, strange things are happening. Like, oh my God, I'm so stressed out. As we grow older, we start losing those abilities. Um, yeah. That's why you should always hear about these stories of this kid did this or this kid. Uh, mom was in a car accident and he went out there and lifted the car up. Right, um, yeah. And his mom is like, how the hell is that? That kid's not bent <laughs> around 300 pounds. Right. But his mental state didn't tell him that he couldn't. And he just focuses his energy and saying, I got to do this. And he, they do it. You know, oh. I think our, our modern world kind of depletes us of our natural thinking in a lot of ways. Love it. Love it. Well, I, I, like I said, uh, you know, coming up with the Parapod Festival, and the, I love that you and Patty are going to be there. But I, one thing I love the more, it's, it's bringing so many different types of people together that have done the research, have done the investigations. Um, I really didn't want people that were just all theory based and nothing wrong with that. And I didn't want somebody that was just all book smart, meaning they read the books, but they've not experienced. Yeah. And that's you have and that real thing, world experience. Yes. And I think for, cause even me, like I said, I'm not, I never say I'm an expert on anything. I'm an enthusiast. I love this stuff. I love learning from people like you and Patty and Linda Moulton Howe and all these people. And so I can never say I've never been on an expedition. I've never been on an archaeological site digging for anything. Not to say I wouldn't love to. <laughs> I would love to. But that's why I'm excited to bring the people that I've brought to Parapod is because every single one of them have been out in the field and we're bringing everybody from every genre of paranormal you know from father sebastian who's in a vampirism and you and patty from the the ghost world linda malton howell and you know jimmy church from ufo and robert shock and and billy carson from ancient civilizations and even ernie lapont who's the great grandson of sitting bull bringing in the native you know the na the the true the true not believers but the true I think answers to many of our questions from the Native Americans and their spirit guides. You know everybody's been there, done that, and I'm excited about this. I really am excited about having uh, all you people, and I feel blessed that this is my first year, and I get so many great people in the first year. <laughs> oh, it's an it's amazing event. Like you said, you got such a huge variety of people. If anyone shows up to this event, uh, whatever your question is, you're going to find right. the right people to answer those questions. Yeah. Uh, you, we're talking about the Parapod Festival coming yes. up here on March 31st and April 1st. Uh, what's cool is the Metroville Park, you know. Oh, yeah. That's happening on, on March 31st. And ironically, uh, I was doing some research on local ghost towns in the area. Mm -hmm. You know, cause I'm, I'm always filming for my Paraflick show and, right. and the other TV shows that I do. And I just came across that recently. And I'm like, oh, this is like 25 minutes away from my house. Right. Why am I not there? What's going on? You know, and all of a sudden, I, I start talking to you a couple of weeks, two weeks later. And you're doing this thing at the Metroville Park. And I'm like. How does that work out? That's like the universe right. bringing it all together, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, people ask me about that. Are you going to go there? And I'm going to I'm gonna go and I'll even bring some equipment if people want to see it to so even try it. It is a haunted location. It's, yeah. it's got spirits there. I'll put some stuff in your hand and you can go check it out and see if the ghost can communicate with you. And that, the good thing about Mintryville is uh, how we're going to do this. It, we do have daytime. Uh, we're doing a daytime tours. So we, there is a Mentry mansion who it's the original home of the Mentry family. Uh, I think they lived there up until Northridge earthquake, if I believe. And then after it kind of got damaged and then they, I think it's a state park now. Um, uh, and so, and then they also have a schoolhouse, one of the first schoolhouses in Santa Clarita area. And it's still there. <laughs> So we're, we're doing daytime tours and then with Sheena Metal and then Robert Hensley is going to be leading the way for that. But then at night, Patty, of course, is going to come in and walk through this mansion in the schoolhouse 
at night. I've been through during the daytime and even in the daytime upstairs, they have a kid's room that made my hair stand on end. And then there's another room that you open the door and there's one rocking chair in the corner, nothing else. And it's just it, like, oh, it just gives you this creepy feeling. Um, and then I didn't get to go in the schoolhouse, but I've heard there's a lot of activity in there. But then also Ben Hansen, as you know, um, mm -hmm. he's bringing all his high tech telescopes and big monitor. And we're going to do stargazing um, in the middle of Mentryville because there's really only one light. <laughs> One light. There's no other lights there. Just one light. It's going to be dark. Um, but so we're going to do stargazing and he's going to do demonstrations on what to look for for UFOs. Because a lot of people say, oh, there's a, there's a UFO and yeah, probably a plane or it could be a planet or something. So he's going to really give demonstrations on what to look for. So that's really kind of our opening act for Parapod. And so I don't know any other way that... I could do better. Um, I didn't know about it. Many people that have that live in Santa Clarita were like, I didn't even know about this. And I've been here yeah. all my life. <laughs> yeah. Surprising. It's like, what, what's, what's this over here? Yeah. Um, but I'm excited about that. You know, when Patty, when Patty goes to her walkthrough, I want to hopefully be there and be a part of that. And if I hope so. Something, if you, if you're, everyone's feeling weird about the rocking chair, I'll put this little guy in the rocking chair and see if it'll light up. And oh, my gosh. That would tell be us great. If they, if they want to talk to us, they can talk to us. I'll even strap on my spirit box and hear the voices saying, hey, get out of my rocking chair. Boy, couldn't you imagine? There'd be half the group would be like, Zoo! out the door. <laughs> oh, I've had spirits say some pretty nasty things to me before. Most spirits like me because I'm a fun guy and I'm, I'm always – trying to have fun with them because they deserve right. to have a good time. Right. You know, but there's always those spirits that are just very, just too serious and take themselves right. serious. I, I, I go to haunted locations where there's ex mobsters and stuff. And those guys oh, are wow. always threatening to beat me up. It's like amazing. Brass knuckles. I don't know what's fish. going on in the thirties and forties, but everyone's talking about brass knuckles. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. You get a, uh, yeah. you get a, a, what a horse head in the mail the next day or something there. They just tell me back in my day, they never, one guy, one spirit told me back in my day, they never find your body. I'm like, oh, oh wow. wow. You're you're a, you're a go-getter then, you know? And then one yeah, guy was talking cool. about his brass knuckles, like, you know, my new pair of brass knuckles. And I'm like, really? Who who talks like that? Who, who carries those around anymore, you know? <laughs> but obviously, you know, that was them, one of their <laughs> pride and joy, their guns and their brass knuckles, I guess. So uh, we experience that sometimes. And hopefully we're not going to get that. Hopefully we're just going to have a bunch of fun spirits that are super excited so. that we're coming to hang out with them and, and have a party and get some great evidence. And for those who are coming, hope you guys can all be a part of that. Don't forget to bring your cameras and stuff. Yes. Uh, make sure you charge your batteries because batteries go quick. Spirits like to eat those things up. So. Oh yeah. No, I, and I, and I hope, uh, the only thing is there's no reception there at all. So if you, if you get scared, you can't call anybody to protect you. So. <laughs> if you get scared, we'll be there. We'll take. Yeah, care we'll. You know, well, Patty you and Patty, Patty will we'll, be there. We'll make sure it's all good. You and Patty will be there. I'll, I'll probably be out in the car with going. Okay, I think I'm gonna drive. <laughs> no, I'm actually excited yeah. about it. I, I honestly, I'm, I'm really excited just to experience that really for the first time with you and Patty, and uh, I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be a great time. It'll be a blast. So everybody out there <laughs> watching the show, make sure you go to Parapod Fest. Parapodfestival.com and reserve your spot now. Uh, it's coming up uh, what, a week from weeks, Friday. A week, yeah, we're coming up quick, you guys. So reserve your spot. It's going to go fast. You know, we'll hope to see you guys out there. Hit me up, hit Patty up, ask us questions. Uh, our good friend Father Sebastian will be there. We all did a bunch of stuff together yesterday, so that's oh what, great. That's why I wanted to watch this. Yeah, we did a thing for our university. We had an open house. And we all had to give these classes together, so it was pretty. It was pretty rad. A lot of oh, people loved it, great. so we're, we're going to continue that tomorrow as well. Well, you guys or, sound uh, fun. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. And uh, and then Saturday, just so make sure you guys know Saturday. If you, it's the best thing is to get the VIP pass. It's like a one seventy five, and in view Stefan ten, you can get a ten percent off of that. And it's access to Friday, all day Friday, Saturday, Friday night, and everything on Saturday. 
even the award ceremony, it's the best uh, value for all the money. And you can do meditation, sound bath, get to see Linda Moulton Howe, Bill, uh, Billy Carson. I was going to say Billy Crystal. <laughs> Maybe he might show up. Not do that. <laughs> <laughs> he might. You never know. Um, yeah. But, uh, I mean, it, anything you can think of from UFOs to Bigfoot, uh, Psychic, they're doing Colby Rebel and uh, um, Jennifer Schaefer. They're going to actually be on stage. I call it the live clue. They're going to try to solve true unsolved crimes on stage. And they're going to show people how they can do that themselves. So, I mean, that's going to be a fun event just watching that. True crime is always a good one. Always keeps you entertained. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so be great. Lots, lots of stuff for everyone. And uh, that's why I say all things paranormal, something for everyone. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you, Tony, for joining us and, and telling us more about the event. I'm super excited. I know the people that I've been talking to are really excited as well. That's awesome. uh, make sure you guys go out there and reserve your spots, get your tickets, uh, bring a jacket if you're going to the nighttime one because it might be cold out there. Uh, <clears throat> it's going to be chilly. Make sure you guys bring water. Bring water. Stay hydrated. That's, that's a big thing with me. I know a lot of people go to these, these haunted locations and they get drained and they become really thirsty. Right. So got to keep your energy high. Stay hydrated. Yeah, gotta so, gotta save up for Saturday too. So you gotta, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, any, so for those who want to reach out to you and ask you questions, uh, real quick, what would be the best way for them to reach out to you? Just go to info at parapodfestival.com. You can reach out there. We will respond. If it's not me, it's somebody on the team, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible and tell you anything you need to know. But uh, there's something for you. Like I said, you you won't be disappointed. So. Hopefully That's come out awesome. and see us. Just go to parapodfestival.com. That's right. Come and join us and have some fun, you guys. All right, Tony. Well, I know you're a busy guy and you got to get going. But And I just, once again, want to really appreciate you coming on the show and spending some time with us today. You know, Hopefully we can do this uh, in the future. We'll talk about the aftermath of the Parapod Festival. Oh, yeah. And get ready for the next year. So I'm sure you'll be Absolutely. there again. So, But thank you for even being a part of it. And thank, thank you for having me on your show. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, man. We're going to talk to you later. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, you guys. And that's going to be this episode of the show. Uh, I really want you guys to check out the Parapod Festival. It's a two-day event. You know, all of us are going to be there bringing different, different types of things to uh, the paranormal. You know, good old Ben's going to be there. Ask him about the UFO stuff. I mean, we're going to be outside where there's no light, so you can have a crystal clear view of the sky. He's bringing his telescopes. He's bringing everything. You know, I'm going to be there. If we're, if we're going to walk through the mansion or the schoolyard and something's going on, uh, I will pull out some equipment so you guys get some real-world feel of an investigation, you know. That way you can say, wow, I was holding this meter. and It was going crazy. It was answering my questions. You know, I heard a spirit answer uh, my question, I asked if I liked ice cream, and it said yes. I mean, who doesn't like ice cream? I like ice cream, obviously, you can tell. But anyway, uh, very important that you guys stay safe. Uh, we will see you guys out there. Once again, go to the parapodfestival.com. Get those tickets. Get them now before they're gone because it's only uh, a little, little more than a little less than two weeks away. So make sure you guys go ahead and do that. We will see you guys out there, and uh, if you go out and investigate, make sure you guys go out and you guys investigate safe. So with that being said, that's going to be the end of the show, and we will see you right here next time on My Dr. Seller.